are starting a new series on this channel and in this series we are going to be talking about tips, tricks, hacks, stories, all from Reddit and of course they are all going to be EDM related. But today we are talking about the ultimate Moonrise Festival cheat sheet and this really is the ultimate Moonrise cheat sheet. This person put so much time and effort and so much love, you could tell, into this cheat sheet. It's cheat sheet. <laughs> it's so crazy how much packed information is in this cheat sheet. So without further ado, let's get prepared. Let's get prepped. Let's get ready to go with this ultimate Moonrise Festival cheat sheet. All right, I moved to the side because I'm going to pop it up right here. I don't know about you guys, but I am a very visual learner, so I need to listen to it and watch it to fully comprehend what I'm learning. If you see me looking down, I'm just looking at my phone. Oh my god, I'm getting a new phone case. I'm ordering it tonight. It's time. I just, there's a lot of things in life that I kind of just let go and I don't really care about, and my phone case is one of them. This was white, so it's time. It's, it's time, or not white, it was clear. Anyway, let's get started. So just looking at the title, this looks like it's also going to be a Baltimore cheat sheet. So I would love to get prepared for Baltimore too. I've only been to Baltimore once. I think it's only once and I think that's when we saw Bless the Fall. It was the Bless the Fall tour and that was amazing. I completely forgot that we took a whole vacation to Baltimore and we even explored the Inner Harbor and we saw Liquid Stranger. So Bless the Fall we only went at night and we didn't see anything at all but I actually did take a whole vacation so oops. <laughs> But I do want to get prepared because I'm a little scared, but I'm a little scared in every area. All right, let's get reading. Buckle up, everyone, especially if you're traveling. Moonrise is two days away and we are officially in crunch time. Moonrise is not two days away. It's... It is six days away if you're watching this on Sunday when I upload it. But it's very close, very close. Uh, just wanted to share my festival and Baltimore tips slash experiences with you guys. So hopefully your trips will go as smoothly as possible. That's sweet. <laughs> this is mainly, this is been, this is mainly for Baltimore rookies, moonrise rookies, or just festival rookies in general. I'll start with the city. Despite Baltimore's scary, albeit, how do you say that? Oh, albeit, albeit, although, albeit, we learn something new every day, <laughs> albeit somewhat deserved reputation, it can be a really fun and beautiful place. Treat it like any other city and use common sense. Don't wander too far off the beaten path and you'll be fine. A decent rule of thumb is the closer you are to the water, the better. Pimlico isn't in the greatest of neighborhoods, as you may have heard, but luckily you'll be in the friendly confines confines of the racetrack, so it won't come into play except for when you're arriving and leaving. More on that later, though. If you get here Friday and want to go out at night, I suggest heading to one of four places, all of which have a bunch of bars, and you can hop around to this goes for after the festival on Saturday and Sunday as well. Power plant is going to be the closest for most of you, assuming you're staying near the harbor, and this is where you'll be going if you're heading to official pre slash after parties. I think I saw that there was a Zed's Dead after party, and I'm like this close to going. <laughs> Um, locals generally stay away from power plant, how, power plant, however, so if you're looking for a more authentic experience and aren't going, then I suggest one of the following. Canton Square is probably the furthest drive, 
but still shouldn't be more than 10 minutes in an Uber, and that's mainly because of lights. I'd say age range is mostly 25 to 35. I'm not there yet. I'm not 25 yet, but I feel like I am in that range. Like how I party is in the 25 to 35 range. I actually just turned 24 a week ago. It was just my birthday, but like I said, I feel like I feel like I'm 30. <laughs> um Clada Clad Clad Daw Pub, El Buffalo, and Plug Ugly all have their moments, but Cladaw's is consistently the most fun. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong, but that's what it looks like. <laughs> Downstairs is more chill, and upstairs is where people dance and whatnot. Honestly, that goes for the other bars I mentioned as well. Fells Point is another area you might enjoy. A ton of bars along all along cobblestone street cobblestone street that sounds really pretty even if we don't go out at night i would love to see that cobblestone street i love seeing just old historical uh roads or buildings anything like that i just think it's so beautiful seeing the history behind towns so that would be really fun to see uh, where am I? Where am I? I lost my place. Lost my place. Oh, age, age range can skew a bit older in Fells, but for a younger crowd, check out the Point Barsacona or Bar Barcosina. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> or the horse you came in on. <laughs> These are some weird names, but. All right, uh, a couple of quick Snapple facts. Snapple facts? Never heard that before. About the horse you might find interesting. It's Baltimore's oldest bar. It's the only bar in Maryland to exist before, during, and after Prohibition, which also makes it America's oldest continually operated saloon. That's cool. Uh, finally, it was Edgar Allan Poe's last known destination before he died. Ooh, that's cool. That's awesome. Pretty cool stuff, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Um, if Canton, Fells, or Power Plant aren't striking a chord, Fed Hill is a dope spot too. Banditos, Wayward, Magurks, McGurks, McGurks. <laughs> Just say that. Just say it real quick. McGurks. Okay. The Charles and One Star could all be fun on any given night. I almost forgot that a bunch of you might be staying up in the Timonium, Cockeysville, Hunt Valley area. If you don't want to venture into the city tomorrow night, but still want to have a few drinks, head over to High Tops, The Still, or Wits End, which is a really dope whiskey bar if that's your thing. I love whiskey. Whiskey is kind of like, a lot of people say that they drink whiskey when they go out, like it's their party drink. But for me, whiskey is like chilling at home or just having like one quick drink at the bar to go back and sleep right away. I don't know why, but whiskey makes me so sleepy. Funnily enough, <laughs> pun intended, Wits End is connected to a comedy club if you want to get some laughs in before the festival. I did in another thread, but I'll mention 1722 again. If you're looking for fun on the late night, it's the only after hours dance spot I know of. It can get um interesting in there sometimes, but I'm sure this weekend we'll see a lot of festival goers and I usually have a good time there. Plan for a 5 to $10 cover. Just a couple of quick food suggestions. They even go into food suggestions. This person, this person, thank you. Um, the Iron Rooster, Canton, Fed Hill, Hunt Valley. I can't suggest this place enough. Definitely more of a breakfast slash brunch spot. Farm to table kind of rustic style. Order the breakfast nachos for the table, then get the chicken and waffles or the shrimp and grits for yourself. Thank me later. Shrimp and grits? 
look i love shrimp and i nah, i don't love grits but i've had it and they're okay but shrimp and grits oh i don't know about that <laughs> um the local fry i'm guessing they put it in uh parentheses so i'm guessing the local fry is in fed hill best wings i've had Okay, this doesn't help me because I don't eat meat. I don't eat meat. <laughs> Why did I say it like that? Um, but if you eat meat, these are good suggestions. They're saying wings. That's why I said that. But they probably have a lot of options. Mostly every single place has like vegetarian options now. It's amazing. Um, best wings I've had. They're crispy AF and come in a variety of flavors. Get whatever variety of flavors um get whatever flavor tickles your fancy but you must try the honey slash old bay effing crack i don't know i don't think i can say that on youtube so sorry <laughs> they also have awesome french fry dishes bulgogi fries taco fries poutine you get the idea uh next up clark burger I'm guessing in Harbor East slash Little Italy, Little Italy, um, solid burgers, solid. great poutine, and boozy shakes. Boozy shakes. Now you are calling my name. That sounds good. Next, Abbey Burger Bistro. Uh, I'm guessing in Fells Point and Fed Hill. Awesome build-your-own-style burger joint that specializes in not often found meats. You can get beef, of course, but the antelope is amazing. Ostrich, kangaroo, and wild boar are some others you'll usually find on the menu. Oh, oh, oh god, okay. Oh, oh jeez. I mean, that's cool, I guess. <laughs> If you're an Arsenal fan, Arsenal, the Fed Hill location supports the squad and they get a great turnout every weekend for the matches. Next, Miss Shirley's at in Inner Harbor. I've actually never eaten here before because the line is always so damn long. It's either really good or a solid tourist trap. Let me know if you try it. Remember that vacation I told you guys that we went on? Yeah, we went to this place, and from what I remember, it was really good. Lastly, Blue Moon Cafe in Fells Point and Fed Hill. Breakfast spot that stays open 24 hours. Weights can be rough during peak breakfast times because it's very small, but Cap'n Crunch French Toast, enough said. Enough said indeed. Now for the festival stuff arriving slash leaving if you're ubering i suggest getting dropped off and picked up on the northern parkway side of the track nothing against the other entrance but if i keep feeling a cat hair always all the time <laughs> anyway nothing against the other entrance but it's more into the neighborhood so there's more traffic and people to deal with You'll also want to get dropped off on the side if you're headed to Will Call or the VIP entrance. Good tips. I would suggest leaving from this side as well, though. It's going to be a cluster. <laughs> no matter where you exit. I suggest this side because it's possible to walk down to the hospital a block away and get your ride to pick you up there. Just leave from the exit near Stellar. I think Stellar is a stage if you've never been to Moonrise. I just looked at the map and I think that's a stage. Um, and make a right. There will still be a lot of cars, but much less and your driver will be able to find you much easier. I got out of there in a more than reasonable amount of time. Thankfully, we, um, thankfully we have shuttle passes so we don't have to worry about getting an uber so thankful that festivals offer shuttle rides it's like if i could recommend one thing that will ease your stress hopefully if they have a good system 
when you go to a festival, I suggest shuttle rides or the shuttle passes. They're seriously so worth it. Uh, like I said, I've never been to Moonrise, so I don't know how their shuttle system is, but I will let you guys know in the vlogs, um, the Moonrise Festival vlogs. Okay, once you get inside, before all the madness, if you want to get merch, make that the very first thing you do on Saturday, which I've heard countless times for every single festival. Um, there won't be a line, and they'll still have your size. After that, familiar familiarize yourself a bit with the festival grounds. Figure out where the med tents and exit are in case of an emergency. Figure out where a couple water stations are and do your first fill up. Yes, 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 yes. I 100% agree with that whole paragraph. Go to the merch tent first if you want to get anything and fill up your water right away before the lines get super crazy. Inside the festival last year was pretty damn hot. Okay, before I continue, let me see when this was posted because, okay, this was posted four years ago. So I would maybe say be careful with this information. It might be outdated. So I'm sorry if it is, but I feel like it's going to be the same a little bit, but yeah, just want to let you guys know that this was posted four years ago. If you're 21, find the Smirnoff, Smirnoff tent and take five. They have a bar, bands, and places to sit. You can even make candy. That's cute. Uh, saved us last year, and I don't think many people knew about it. Speaking of taking five, if you're not 21, please don't be afraid to take five to 15 minutes to just sit and enjoy the set that way. I still struggle with that and I've been going to festivals since 2018 so for the people that forget to sit I'm with you I am with you I am trying to get better at it because I just get so excited that we're at the festival and I forget to sit and my body hurts so bad on day two so yes take some time to sit even if it's for the first half of the set just take some time and rest. Especially you solar tent fiends. It's not much, but it'll save your legs over the course of the weekend. I wonder what that means. I think Sudden Death is playing at the solar tent. That was random, but just popped up in my head. Trust me, there's always going to be another drop you can rage to, I promise. Okay, so I'm guessing the solar tent Oh, my leg is asleep. <laughs> I'm guessing the solar tent is like the dubstep stage. That's my guess. Even if you don't want to sit down, just get to an area where you can take your bags off your back and set them on the ground in front of you. Yes, whenever I get really tired, I take my bags off and I don't want to be in anyone's way. So I put the bag in between my legs and then I squeeze my legs but not so much that I'm not resting but I squeeze my legs and then I put one foot through one of the straps so no one can just like take my bag. Can't tell you how liberating this feels when you've been wearing bags all day. Take breaks and don't forget to eat at least a little something. Yes. Hydrating is obviously important but salt is often neglected. There's a reason there's a reason ultra marathon runners keep salt tablets with them. It's essential and you lose it when you sweat. My suggestion is to grab something around four to five before things start to get weird and you forget, lol. <laughs> okay, getting water. I always read a lot of complaints about the water situation, so hopefully this helps because I never seem to have a weight. Even at ultra where they only had two refill stations, I never waited more than a couple minutes. Stop trying to get water in between sets. That's unsurprisingly when most people head to the spigots. Spigots. <laughs> Instead, go in the middle of the set. As tragic as it may be, you might miss a drop or two, but like I said earlier, there will always be another. If you're with a squad, just take turns sending someone with two camelbacks and you'll, you'll likely only have to do it once when it is your turn to have your shit ready to go. 
Oh, when it when it is your turn, have your shit ready to go. This obviously helps keep things moving. Also, when you get to the spigot and begin filling, have your bladder hose in your mouth. This does two things. Keeps it from dragging. I don't know. I'm weird about that. But more importantly, it allows you to just slug as much water as you want slash need without, without the consequence of running out. I've never done that before, but I might try it. <laughs> It'll hold you over for a while until you need your next drink and thus keep your bladder filled longer, which reduces the amount of times you need to eat. You need to even go over there. Okay. I'm not reading this on here, but I do have a quick tip for you guys. Um, if you want, you are allowed to bring empty water bottles into festivals. I hope you can bring it into Moonrise because if you can't, I'm giving you the wrong information. But um, if you can bring empty water bottles into Moonrise, there's been a few festivals that I bring like a mini water bottle or just a regular sized plastic water bottle and I have it empty and then I just put it in my bag and I fill that up. So just in case if you're in the middle of a set and you don't want to leave that set, you have that emergency water bottle in your hydration pack that'll hold you over. So I know this person just said don't wait until the um don't wait until between sets, but if you really really don't want to go and you run out of water and you didn't expect you to run out of water, that water bottle came in handy a lot during Lost Lands. So quick tip <laughs> um okay time stamp your text i always forget to do this always if you're trying to coordinate with friends around the festival with texts chances are they might take more than f a few minutes to get through especially as it gets later in the day and more people are trying to do the same to help put what time you actually sent the text in parentheses <laughs> at the end of your text um, as I've said before, I realize you guys love your solar tent, but this isn't the field of dreams. If you step over the line to leave the tent, you are most certainly allowed to go back. Please don't stay at one stage the whole time. If I can pull my ass away from celestial, I never know if that's celestial or celestial, celest, I don't know, um, from celestial, so <laughs> Now I'm struggling saying it. A few times, you guys can leave your favorite stages as well. We don't bite over at the health stage, so come over and I'll teach you how to shuffle if you're inclined to learn. That is very cute. And on um, and for this year, Dom Dalla is going, and I love Dom Dalla. And we miss Dom Dalla at Forest, so I'm gonna try really hard not to miss that. And if you guys see me, I'm a very beginner shuffler. But if you guys are so inclined to learn, I would love to teach you guys if you want to learn. I only know basic things. But if you want to learn the basic things, I will try my best to teach you guys as well. Phone theft. Flip belts are the best way to keep your shit, to keep your shit. But if you don't have one and you're the type to get sucked up into the crowd, please be aware of your surroundings especially at the bigger name artist sets because the crowds can get pretty dense and when you're lost in the sauce, it's very easy to forget. Stay vigilant and look out for one another. Call those clowns out if you see something amiss. I, it makes me so upset that people steal phones at festivals and it's just like, like that person bought a ticket to go to this festival and they have in their mind while these people are enjoying their favorite artists and they're just vibing out and listening to these sets, they go and their whole intention, I mean, I don't know what their whole intention is, but a huge thing that they want to do at this festival is to steal phones. It just uh, it infuriates me. It makes me so upset. Yes, please, please watch out for your stuff. And if you think you're going to lose your phone, if you're holding it in your hand, just put it away. Get a few clips and put it in your bag. Or if you don't trust people uh, and you think people are going to open up your bag, 
my hydration pack is really great i think it's elevated life there's a secret compartment right where my back is so it's very hard to get in there um i don't know if it'll hold a really big phone but mine is an iphone x so it's pretty small and i think it'll hold this so try and just find a secret bag or i know lunchbox is anti-theft so keep your belongings safe and secure because these people are never going to stop and it makes me so angry but just do your best to keep your things safe um party favors i can't condone drug use but we have to be honest here a large percentage of the festival will be partaking so if you're one of those people please don't go too hard too early probably shouldn't go too hard at all but try to at least ease your way into the day let the sun start to go down a bit before you start artificially raising your heart rate and body temp if you're drinking in the sun all afternoon def don't forget to find time for water as well yes please 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 take care of yourself it is so scary how many people overdose at festivals and how many people take way too much way too fast and they get really sick or they have to go to the med tent or even worse they have to go to the hospital so please be careful how much you take test your stuff dance safe and um what's the other one i'm sorry i forgot the other one but there's usually a booth at festivals nowadays that will test your stuff please test your stuff be careful drink lots of water and as always the med tent is there to help you. They're not there to get you in trouble. If you don't feel good, please go to the med tent. Tell your friends that you need to go to the med tent. They are so helpful there. Anytime I went to the med tent, I've never had to go to the med tent for anything serious for myself. I only went to um, charge my phone at Forest or uh, I had to get Band-Aids. Um, and I think that's it. Oh, and then I went with my girlfriend. She got a splinter in her finger or her hand at um, Okeechobee and at Okeechobee and they had to take the splinter out. But yeah, I've never had to go to the med tent for anything serious. But every time I go, they're so sweet. They're so caring. They're there to help you. So yeah. And the same with drinking. Drinking dehydrates you so much much it is actually oh, let's look it up because i'm actually pretty interested okay so it says right here right after i google how much does alcohol dehydrate you it says if you've ever heard the term breaking the seal yes yes i've heard of that <laughs> you know that alcohol has a diuretic diuret diuretic i'm sorry i don't want to say that effect on the body meaning it causes you to urinate more frequently the process is called dir di di diures how do i say that dire diuresis okay the process is called diuresis i'm probably saying that wrong which on its own causes dehydration in fact 10 grams of alcohol makes you produce 100 milliliters so yeah alcohol dehydrates you like crazy for me i always have one water bottle or one glass of water for every drink that i have even better if i can have two glasses of water or two water bottles of water before i have another drink even if you have that one water bottle and you go drink water drink water that still hydrates you more than just drinking all night long and if you drink too fast and in the sun that can make you really really sick so just make sure you stay hydrated everyone drink your water <laughs> last and maybe my favorite tip just started doing this recently keep an extra pair of clean socks in your bag with you bonus points if brand new at some point, maybe around 9 p.m. or so, after you've been raging and sweating all day. Raging! <laughs> raging at solar tent. Is it solar tent? I hope it's solar tent. 
Um, at some point, oh, I just read that. Uh, raging and sweating all day. You're going to remember you have fresh socks and your eyes will light up. You'll slide those puppies on basically on basically become superhuman. Now I've never done crack, but I imagine the feelings are pretty damn similar. Okay. I agree with this. I've never brought a pair of socks when I just go to a festival, but when I go to a camping festival, it's such a great feeling when you go back to put all your night clothes on and you, um, what's my collar doing? I don't know. Um, it's such a great feeling putting new socks on. It really does change your entire festival experience. It's amazing. Um, all right. Last thing I want to throw out there isn't really a tip but just try to practice good festival etiquette. There aren't many rules, obviously you can pretty much do you, but if you make a totem and it's not see-through, please turn that ish sideways during a set. Thanks in advance from the people behind you. <laughs> if you see someone having a rough time, offer them water or even to go get help if need be. The star team are always fantastic, but they can't be everywhere. This is a group effort and we're only as strong as our weakest link. Let's try to keep everyone upright this year, eh? <laughs> and last, please throw your trash in a trash can. Crazy concept, I know, but <laughs> it's so easy if you're a smoker and keep an empty Altoids tin or something similar for your butts. Yes, please, please. Geez, this was way more than I originally planned to write, and I'm still sure I've left things out. So if you have any questions, if you have any questions or need me to elaborate anything, please feel free to reach out. Safe travels, everyone. Woo! That really was the ultimate cheat sheet. Thank you so much to that person that left all that information you are, I can tell you're just such a good person and you are so sweet because a lot of that cheat sheet was just making sure we're taking care of ourselves and everyone around us. I feel like I am definitely ready not only to take on the town in Baltimore because of all those recommendations, but I'm ready to take on Moonrise Festival. So I hope you guys enjoyed this new series. Please let me know by giving this video a like and letting me know what tips, tricks, hacks, questions, stories, whatever you guys would like me to research and make a video on in the comments below. That is it. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.